Uh, right, so, uh, it's a morning after one of the most horrific UConn games we've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> say uh, the least. Yeah, it was not good, as UConn went down to Oklahoma at the Fiesta Bowl. Uh, Josh, how did you see the game? Well, what I saw is the same UConn team we've seen all year, just not being able to get away with it against Oklahoma. You got a, a good defense, not great. They, they played good the second half. The first half was just awful. You got no, you got a okay quarterback at best with no receivers to throw to, drops left and right. At least one of those interceptions was not his fault. The Two. one that Mike Smith Two was on the ground, and the other one wasn't his fault either. I mean, it's just Jordan Todman had an okay game. Yeah, he put up over 100 yards, but, what, 30-something carries to get there. It just was not a fun game to watch offensively and defensively. Too many big plays given up. Uh, I, I got to agree. I thought that... Um... I, I'll say that Zach Frazier, I thought he was going to have a horrible game. Um, I actually thought he played well uh, last night. Yeah, um, I, agree. I agree. He did not play that bad. It wasn't really his fault. It, the receiving core, where they're talking about the Moore brothers, Isaiah and Kashif, or if you're talking about um, Michael Smith, uh, they all played pretty horrifically. Uh, batted balls, getting uh, up for interceptions. That was terrible for UConn. Um, they had two interception returns for touchdowns that were from batted balls by the UConn receivers. That's... Uh, you can't do that if you're going to be... A, if you're in the Fiesta Bowl, you cannot be making those types of mistakes and having those sorts of problems. And uh, Jordan Todman, yeah, he had over 100 yards, but uh, he was awful in the first half, and I don't think a lot of that was his fault necessarily. Uh, I thought... The, I just think Oklahoma was a better team. They, They're bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah, they. I mean, that's what happens when you have better recruits, and uh, they, they were just the better team, and... There's nothing really much more to say. The one thing I'll, I'll bash Zach Frazier about is he really doesn't show much emotion out there. He doesn't really have that adrenaline rush, or at least doesn't seem like it, that gets him into the game. I think only one time I saw him mad, that was when Ryan Griffin had that drop for on third down. He said something like, catch the ball, or something like that. But other than that, they always showed him, zoomed up on him after you know a drop or maybe a bad pass, and he just had that same, like, Dumbfounded look on his face, like he didn't really care. Like he was just out there playing. Uh, I'll give him benefit of the doubt. I think he does care. I mean, it's his last college game. You're you're out. I think maybe you had a little bit of wide eye perspective, where like you're in kind of a little bit shock and awe. You're, I mean, here you are as a the UConn quarterback taking your team to the Fiesta Bowl in Arizona, and you're playing this team that is just far better than you. And uh, I, I I did see some of that last night where he was shocked and awed, but uh, I. I'm actually going to give him a good market for the for the game. He did not play that bad. Zach Frazier, you know, at least he went out having a, a, a decent game, a good game, after having us, you know, a pretty not too good of a career as a UConn Husky. And it's it's funny to say, but I think he'll be missed a little bit come next year. Because, well, I mean, they're going to replace him with who? Michael Box, you know, maybe another sophomore we haven't really heard of. But, I mean... We're not going to have anyone that much better than him, if better at all. Uh, unfortunately, Endres is a better quarterback, but it doesn't look like he's going to be on the team yeah, next year after getting kicked off. Um, so that's going to hurt. And I mean, I, I'm not too high on Mike Box. I, I, I don't yeah, think you're too high on him. One, I saw him that one game last year, and it was just where they, they took him out to put in Frazier. That was when Frazier came back. I mean, uh, it didn't, didn't show me anything there. No, and and it's sad. Right now, here we are saying the day after the, the just horrific UConn game, and uh, this program is going to go in one of two directions, and I hope, I mean, when we think about it, UConn could have, we, we put in this game, we're in the Fiesta Bowl, so we think maybe we're going to attract more recruits, get better players into the right. system, um, be stable, be a, an up-and-coming program with the, in the Big East, and it's going to be something that's going to be vital when you're talking about TCU is entering the conference the year right. after next. They looked at as, you know, a team that's going to dominate the conference. Um, absolutely, and why would you not think that after winning the... Uh, the uh, Rose Bowl last night, or uh, yesterday afternoon, over Wisconsin. Um, so, I mean, it's a scary thought. And, I mean, or recruits won't want to come after watching UConn get bashed in by Oklahoma and say, well, why would I want to go to that team when we're just going to be put on the national stage, and really the national stage for the first time, and look horrific. So it's going to go one of two ways. Right, and you really got to be concerned about, you know, next year. I mean, they're not really going to get the big recruits for next year. I mean, the recruiting process is coming coming to an end kind of there and you got to look at all the players graduating or leaving early as Jordan Todman pointed out last night he's going to the NFL and you got you know Lutris, Lawrence Wilson, like I said Zach Frazier won't be there a lot of their big name players you know they don't have many superstar players on their team but their bigger name players will be gone next year uh, you really don't know how the team's going to turn out 
this was not a, a young UConn team. They're young at certain positions, but um, uh, <coughs> last night the secondary was absolutely used and abused by Oklahoma. Uh, Landry threw for how many yards last night? It was 430? Yeah, over 430 yards. And, you know, that's the thing. You said they're young in some positions. They're young at the positions that they're not very good at right now. So, I mean, you can, you can be optimistic and say, oh, maybe they'll improve or in the secondary or, you know, linebacker positions with them, with Lutris and Wilson graduating. But you just got to hope. That's the thing. Uh, I, I gotta agree. And we're talking about the future of the team. We um, we don't know which way this team's gonna go at this point. It, it, I feel like it's either gonna be really good or it could go really bad, yeah, uh, especially with the uh, news that Randy Etzel is going to Maryland. Right, and I I don't see what he's doing there. I mean, he's not really moving up the ladder, going to Maryland. You would think UConn would be kind of a stepping stone, if anything, for him, or he'll be here his whole career. But kind of moving sideways to Maryland really shocks me. Uh, I think it's honestly a step down. There's not too much appeal to the University of Maryland. I mean, I would almost guess uh, last year he was linked with the job going to Georgia Tech, which I kind of understand that that that's a and big even upgrade. Miami, I mean, those uh, are both well. I, I mean, I wouldn't even go to Miami at this point. That's not a program that's looking too good. I mean, yes, you got to look at the prestige of the program. I mean, Maryland really doesn't have that football prestige. No, they don't. I I kind of just don't understand why he's going there. To be honest, I uh, he's had an amazing ten years at UConn or longer, really, and. Uh, it, it's honestly troubling. I, I don't see the, the move because when you look at Maryland, you're looking at a conference at Boston College, Clemson. There's a uh, lot of teams who have the potential to be good every year in that conference. And Maryland know, really Virginia is not Tech, one Florida of them. State. I mean, yeah. it's like you just won the Big East. I mean, I, it's almost like maybe he sees this as, all right, mission accomplished. I did everything I could with this program, so I'm ready for a new challenge. Right. Which, I mean, I kind of understand that. But at the same time, if, if you go to Maryland, it's not going to be happy times, I don't think. I don't know if he can turn that program around. Well, the thing is, there's also a lot of good players in the Washington area that if he feels he can recruit them, he might be able to turn that program around. I mean, there's a lot more than in Connecticut, for instance. But he's done a great job of finding those you know, players who maybe aren't the four-star or five-star players in the Connecticut area and turning them into you know, pretty good players. Jordan Todman, you know, all these, Scott Lutra, straight out of Connecticut, I mean all these players who aren't big names in high school, and he just turns them into pretty good players. Uh, I, I agree, and you, a great guy you can talk about in that category was Lawrence Wilson. Lawrence Wilson, yeah. his own, he's from uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, and he only had one scholarship offer, and that was from UConn, and Lawrence Wilson turned out to be one of UConn's uh, best defensive players, um, and UConn's going to miss him terribly. Um, so we've got, uh, now with Edsel gone, we have to start thinking of possible replacements for him. Uh, they might try to promote from within, kind of what, like what West Virginia did when they made uh, Stewart their head coach. Right. Um, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they have to go out after a bigger-named coach. Right, especially, you know, with we, what we said earlier, the program kind of with, the, with all the greater pl gooder, better players graduating this year, they really need a big-name coach to step out and get some big recruits. Uh, absolutely. Um, one name I, I would love to see them get, and it's very controversial, but I think bringing in Mike Leach... Uh, would be an amazing hire because um, I, I know he had that problem with Craig James with the, the whole putting his uh, Craig James's son in the uh, in the shed when uh, he had a concussion and it, it looked really bad but I, at the end of the day this guy can flat out coach um, he's got a high power I mean he had a high powered offense like do you remember when the the uh, Michael Crabtree game uh, against Texas, I mean, you can expect that type of game. Now that might not work in Connecticut with how cold it gets, and we've and never had just the players. We don't, we don't really have the Michael Crabtree as a wide receiver. No, but I, I feel like he could bring him in. I think Mike Leach is a great recruiter. I mean, he got Michael Crabtree to go to Texas Tech. I mean, the, the guy and, can find a recruit. And I mean, my key player for next year, Dwayne Difton out of Florida. This guy is supposed to be a four-star recruit coming out of Florida. He was the the biggest recruit <laughs> UConn's ever gotten, and he really hasn't done much so far. And, you know, the guy like Mike Leach and his high-powered offense, he might be able to turn Difton into a great receiver for UConn. Uh, I, I really hope that's true. I, I would love to see Mike, uh, Mike Leach come into the program. But we've got a couple other names written down. Uh, Tyrone Willingham, former Notre Dame and former Washington coach. That's kind of a stretch. Uh, Tyrone Willingham's last uh, coaching exhibition was Washington, and uh, he went 0-12 his final season there. So that might not be the greatest hire, but it's a name floating around. Um, also, Jeff Jagodzinski uh, used to coach at Boston College. Then he had that bizarre 
thing with the Jets. He was yeah. con- he went to go talk with the Jets, which made him get fired by Boston College, and now he's the offensive coordinator and at he, Tampa he Bay. He's still a good coach there. I mean, uh, if you want to talk about another controversial name, maybe Rich Rodriguez, who obviously did not have a great season with Michigan and is not very liked by UConn fans because of his days with West Virginia. But, I mean, UConn, he knows what we can do, and we know what he can do. And if for some reason he gets fired in Michigan – I think it's worth a shot to look at him because he runs, you know, a pretty good offense and he gets good recruits and this guy can coach. I, I absolutely agree. I think if Michigan fires Richard Rich Rodriguez, say that five, five times fast, <laughs> uh, I think that would be uh, ludicrous to be honest because for Rich Rodriguez to run his offense, it does take years, at least three years, to recruit the right guys to get right. the athletic offensive line, to get the right quarterback and the right running back into his system. It, it takes years to recruit. And uh, so if he gets fired by Rich Rodriguez, it kind of, if he, it'd be ludicrous by Michigan. But in UConn, would I hire him? In a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. I think this guy would be an amazing coach at UConn. And uh, uh, I, I would love that hire. And we know what he's capable of in the Big East. We saw that juggernaut he... He uh, formed at West Virginia. Um, I, I think he could do wonders with uh, with UConn. I think that would be an amazing hire. Yeah, I absolutely, like I said, I absolutely agree. I mean, if he can get the right quarterback, you know, maybe a mobile quarterback, an athletic offensive line, like you said, this, I mean, it, it would be a totally revamped and different team. But he knows what he's doing in that kind of system, and I think it would be a huge benefit to the program. And, and we said the comparison to Mike Leach to Rich Rodriguez, Mike Leach runs the run-and-gun offense, which is constantly passing, so it might be harder for for UConn to accept. It would take maybe a little longer because they'd have to find the right quarterback and then a couple more stable receivers. But if you brought in Rich Rodriguez, it's a totally different running game, but it's still a running game. And UConn's had great running backs in the past. I mean, Dixon, Brown, uh, Terry Colley, and Jordan Todman. And we don't know the running back coming next year, but um, hopefully you, somebody will be able to step up. Yeah, and but I also think that it's going to take time with you know a guy like Rich Rodriguez because you got to you really have to get the right quarterback. You have to get like an option style quarterback, a very mobile quarterback. I mean, Tyler Lorenzen was mobile for us a few years back, but he's nowhere near what Rich Rodriguez is looking for when considering a mobile quarterback. You no, need someone who can almost act as a running back, but, you know, can throw the ball, you, too. You need somebody with 4-3 speed to run his offense, like yeah. Denard Robinson, like Pat White. And um, that's his type of quarterback. That's what we would go, need to go out and recruit. And It needs to be a guy that can throw, but is more, more of a runner, to yeah. be honest. Um, so those are our thoughts on, on UConn and where they're going and what happened last night. Um, stay tuned to Off and Running. Follow us on Twitter. That's Off and Running with two G's at the end. O F F A N G R U N N I N G G. And follow our YouTube page as well. Uh, same same spelling. So uh, thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys again soon.